Good afternoon, dear friends. At the outset, I thank the Honorable Governor of ACP India, Dr. Mane Anuj Maheshwari, my dear friend, Dr. Narsing Verma, Dr. Jain Panda, and all the office bearers of ACP India for giving me an opportunity to share my thoughts, views, concepts, and passion. Today, I'm going to discuss about diabetes, which has a potential to make a man important, and how do we get rid of it. In this next 20 minutes, I will give you some nuggets of wisdom and potential insight as to how we can prevent this uh, uh, this uh, symptom which is affecting uh, day to day in, in their life and in the relationships. With pranams to God and thanks to my teachers, Dr. O.P. Kapoor, Prakash Kothari and Sashank Joshi, I beseech them to bless me always. I have no conflict of interest. Our first data from KEM, 56,000 patients, all were diabetics. In males, we found these patients had erectile dysfunction, premature ejaculation and low desire. And all the females had low desire and depression was seen as the most common symptom in every diabetic female. When we look at the prevalence in India and China, there is an immense increase in the in the amount of patients, number of patients having diabetes and erectile dysfunctions. So I call, in fact, India and China are almost the diabetes capital of the world, losing to China. But erectile dysfunction being the commonest complication of diabetes in in type 2 men, we can now say that Chindia or the Chin, China and India are the erectile dysfunction capital of the world. <clears throat> Both type 1 and type 2 diabetics are associated with increased risk of erectile dysfunction. In MASH male aging study, diabetic men showed three times probability of having ED when compared with men having no diabetes. When we look at the, in, uh, look at the uh, schematic uh, uh, diagram or the physiology of erection, this is the vascular endothelium and the neuronal endothelium of the penile vasculature. Vascular endothelium produces endothelial nitric oxide synthetase and the neuronal endothelium produces neuronal endothelial nitric oxide synthetase. These two synthetase enzymes potentiate the nitric oxide which is the chemical signaling molecule to enter into the corpora cavernosa smooth muscle cell and convert guanosine triphosphate into cyclic guanosine monophosphate with the help of an enzyme called guanolyl cyclase. Now this cyclic GMP through protein kinase G does not allow the calcium to go out and makes the whole corpora cavernosa muscle to relax and allows the blood to flow in and a man gets erection. But sadly, this cyclic GMP hydrolyzes into 5-GMP with the help of an enzyme called phosphodiesterase 5. So if you look at a physiology of erection, what does a man need to get a good erection? Basically, he needs a good endothelium which can produce endothelial nitric oxide synthetase. He needs nitric oxide which is the main chemical currency of the cell in a more available form. He needs gonolate cyclase activators and stimulators. He needs cyclic GMP to be there more. And he needs something to block this PD5 in a, a, a PD5 enzyme, which we have in the form of sildenafil, eudenafil, tadalafil, verdenafil, and now new kid in the block as avanafil. So this is how it is. And when you look at diabetes, hyperglycemia produces advanced glycated end products and definitely oxidative stress, which does the molecular alterations, which inhibits these production of the uh, nitric oxide synthetase and nitric oxide, which leads to damage of the macromolecular protein oxidation modification, endothelial apoptosis and va vascular endothelial signaling inhibition leads to cavernous cell endothelial dysfunction, which alters the function of the endothelial of the cavernous cells and then this produces erectile dysfunction. So erectile dysfunction and diabetes and endothelial dysfunction, they have a possible link. When you look at diabetes, hyperglycemia, high inflammatory markers like TNF, activate the PKC, uh, PKC, produce NADPH oxidase, also uncouples the endothelial nitric oxide synthetase and this all leads to decreased L-arginine which we know that is, is a nitric oxide donor and there is definitely due to reactive oxygen species which are formed due to NADPH oxidase produces rho activation which increases the permeability and L and arginase enzyme which increases reduces the formation of arginine, reduces the formation of nitric oxide, reduces the relaxation which is required and ultimately leads to endothelial dysfunction. So friends, diabetes 
diabetic patients will definitely have endothelial dysfunction or will definitely have erectile dysfunction or potency. Molecular basis has been studied. A signaling pathway involved in the calcium channeling called rho a rho a kinase is turned on. When this signaling pathway is turned on, there is definitely vasoconstriction in the mass microvasculature of the penis. The intracavernous pressure decreases, mean arterial pressure decreases and there is chronic detumescence in these patients. Another molecular basis of diabetic associated erectile dysfunction which has been studied is the reduction of expression of the anti-apoptosis gene BCL2 in the cavernosal tissue. Tissue de deficient in this gene expression is likely to have cellular homeostasis shifted towards cell death and organ organ degeneration. So, when you have endothelial dysfunctions in diabetics, there is not only structural but functional changes also which we see in diabetics. So, diabetic poten uh, potentially have a tendency to get or do definitely get erectile dysfunctions. A beautiful study called female study, look at the mnemonic, female experience of men's attitudes to life, events and sexuality. That's the whole female. This is a study of females who had erectile whose husbands had erectile dysfunctions. So, they found and they studied and they asked questions and they found that some women felt that they can obtain sexual gratification even without good erections. Some women felt that they were, they were not attractive enough. Some felt their partners are infidelity. So, ultimately, it does affect the quality of life. There is frustration, sense of inadequacy and insecurity in most of the patients. It does affect the relationship. The, the whole thing is whether it is testosterone deficiency, diabetes, associated testosterone deficiency or estrogen deficiency, the couple needs to be treated as a whole. It is not just the thing that only the male has an issue. In, in this treatment, we need to involve the couple together. It does produces endothelial dysfunctions, emotional dysfunctions. But if you diagnose early, as early as 30 years, you can prevent early death. You can retard the onset of critical events like myocardial infarction or stroke in these patients. And education is the key. It does affect the individual, the partner, and there is definitely a dent in the relationship. The real world studies in diabetic patients show that diabetes, erectile dysfunction, cardiovascular disease, and depressions are interrelated. And we all should be aware of this and treat this as a complete holistic clinical setting, which is very complex. And we should check with these patients at the age of 30 who have a family history of metabolic syndrome. COVID-19 has also been proven to be endothelial dis disease. And we have seen a lot of patients coming with erectile dysfunction post COVID, even after taking vaccinations. So the flaccid truth is endothelial dysfunction causes erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction causes emotional dysfunction. But the bitter truth is all these are the manifestations of aging, age-related complications, which includes diabetes. And we know aging produces the same uh, angiotensin 2, inflammatory markers, there's pressure, uncompleting of endothelial nitric oxide synthetase, antioxidative system ultimately produces reactivation, reactive oxygen species, which inactivates the nitric oxide, there is decreased nitric oxide production, endothelial dysfunction sets in, numerous uh, uh, molecules do come into play, there is vascular complications and definitely erectile dysfunction in aging also. If aging is a disease, we all are living, no friends, aging is not a disease. It is nothing but progressive increase in the pro-inflammatory status which we are all in and this is governed by cellular and molecular defense mechanism. Immunosenescence is an adaptive net result of the body's defense mechanism which is a dynamic process and most of the inflammaging disease which we see are cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, heart disease. All these are due to aging and age related complications due to stress, oxidative inflammation. They produce several signaling pathway leading to inflammation and friends diabetes is an inflammation disease. Now, what we see in diabetics and we should know is that endothelium derived nitric oxide is an anti atherosclerotic molecule and also anti thrombotic molecule. So, the presence of nitric oxide is a must for which we need endothelial nitric oxide synthetase for, we need, for which we need a good endothelium. And nitric oxide decreases as we age. At the age of 60, we'll have hardly 15% of nitric oxide. So we need something to definitely set up or increase the nitric oxide in our body as we age. The relationship of between erectile dysfunction and cardiovascular disease is very simple. Presence of ED is nothing but subclinical cardiovascular disease. And we know cardiovascular disease is the highest mortality uh, cause in, across the globe, be it in India, be it abroad, India it is more. So, diabetes produces an importance in men because of increased advanced glycated uh, products, 
end products hypogonadism due to low testosterone in diabetics depression and concomitant use of drugs be it anti hypertensives like beta blockers diuretics be it some things like phenobarbital or any medications for depression which they give how do we manage erectile dysfunction rule out the psychogenic causes by asking one simple question that do you have morning erections when you get up from sleep if he says yes he has got no organic disease it is purely psychological or situational they don't need pd inhibitors they need just counseling and we assess ed with two questionnaires which are validated iief and shim and we uh, we advise them on smoking diet exercise blood pressure to be controlled lipids to be controlled hbavc to be less than 7 eye feet and oral hygiene to be examined every time when patients come to you put them on guardian drugs like aspirin ace inhibitors and stat tens work them up for heart and give them some drugs if required cremastic reflex and bulbo cavernous reflex rules out neurogenic causes so it's very good to see we i feet and oral ex- hygiene to be checked and we also give office sildenafil 50 mg test or we give intracavernous papaverine to check to rule out psychogenic or er- additional test we do are all hormones vitamin d uric acid phosphorus sonography of the scrotum doppler studies serum psa free total digital rectal examination and nigi rigi scan salivary tumor necrosis factor alpha can detect the severity of erectile dysfunction just by putting a swab on the gum and testing it under the microscope uh, the relationship of platelet and lymphocyte ratio is a very good very good indication of patients with severity of my, uh, of erectile dysfunction you don't have to ask them just look at the cbc report look at the platelets look at the lymphocyte do a mental calculation if the ratio is more than 105 is got mild is got if it is 116 and more if the ratio of plr is 116 and more is got moderate if it is more than 136 it is got he has got severe erectile dysfunction we have screen out of persons due to age reader you can easily um, uh, 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 diagnose erectile dysfunction so these are the methods where you can diagnose erectile dysfunction if you are embarrassed to talk to your patients and then once you diagnose you can co- you can confront with this so how do we treat patients we have oral drugs with counseling and lifestyle injections of papaverin vacuum erect vacuum therapy intraurethral prostaglandins counseling and lifestyle measures and if all these fail we put our patients to andro surgeons and they do implants and uh, anastomotic surgery but counseling and lifestyle measures form the mainstay of treatment for erectile dysfunctions we have four pd5 inhibitors all these have got side effects of headache nasal congestion visual disturbances and cannot be given in patients who have got ni- over on nitrates or have hypotensions or have anatomical penile defect like peroni sickle cell disease multiple myeloma or leukemia effects of tadalafil low dose tadalafil for 12 weeks have been shown to produce fantastic result even if the hba1c is 9 even if he has got hypertension even if he has got prostatic hypertrophy or even dyslipidemia all these showed low dose pd5 inhibitors be it 5 mg or 10 mg have been very very effective and why patients fail because they they don't take it in the right way you know they have if they have take sildenafil they have to take it prior to meals a couple of hours they have to stimulate themselves have a light meal all these things are not observed or they come very late uh, you know after taking all cocktail treatment they come to us they take ayurvedic unani this that they are so much depressed so that's why these patients, these don't work my friend dr jyoti dev used uh in insulin pumps and he found 83% patients improved in their sexual functions metformin is a wonderful drug it reduces weight it reduces hyperglycemia also brings down the hba1c it is can be given to every patient who is a diabetic as an adjunct to uh, pd5 inhibitors if you want to give sglt2 inhibitors because of its class effect have shown improvement in erectile dysfunction if you give sglt2 inhibitors and if you give metformin to your patients and advise all the lifestyle measures friends they don't need pd5 inhibitors they will get normal physiological erections in their whole life metformin 1 gram sesame seed oil l arginine is a fantastic fantastic treatment for patients who got buried penis syndrome the paper we have published already and we have got novel treatments like low intensity extra corporeal shock wave therapy platelet rich plan but these are good for mild to moderate all those patients who do not want to take drugs etc this is very good for them we have so many novel molecular targets which are there in the treatment but stem cell treatment gene therapy have been the promise of future which will definitely now come through now 
there are a lot of nutraceuticals like l arginine which modulate glucose and lipid metabolism fenugreek in saponized form is known to reduce postprandial hypoglycemia and also produce testosterone like free testosterone like effect which increases the desire in the patient new medical treatment which we have avanafil which we can give to our patients the onset of action is 15 minutes and it is washed out from your body within 5 hours and it has got low pd6 and pd11 inhibition which is a fantastic thing for our patients to give because if it's got a very short life of 5 hours and if the patient is on nitrates we can ask him to skip the nitrates and take this tablet and get good enough sex and have enjoy sex and and this is the only drug which you can give even in patients who are on nitrates by skipping the nitrates on that day and it has got very less side effects and the beautiful thing about it is the onset of action is within 15 minutes it has been tried in uh, diabetic patients what was more important in diabetic patients when we put them this 12 week study showed that they increase in their sexual encounter even twice in one night or even thrice in one night and all the domains of iief scores were shown to be better novel molecules which soon will hit the market are slx2101 mirodenafil and lodenafil and we need to think whether it is a disease or whether it is a symptom if it is a symptom pharmacotherapy if it is a disease we need to give them something to cure it we which we have in the form of regenerative medicines and phytonutraceuticals so current medical treatment or current treatments for ed do not treat 99% of their patients as a curative treatment so we need to think you know all these things are just subjective and for the time being temporary treatments but so what we need for giving our erectile dysfunction patients a cure and something which is very very effective and what we have today is in the form of stem cells now they try diabetic in diabetic importance with umbilical cord blood stems intracavernous transplant in seven patients they injected 15 million umbilical cord blood cells and what they found six out of seven men regained morning erections with it so this is a promising treatment of course it is a regenerative treatment and it needs a lot of robust evidence to be tested so my ethical perspective my last part of my talk is we need to think far we need to think wide and we need to think hard pd5 inhibitors are very good they are therapeutics not only in heart disease which they were initially discovered for diabetes and even cancer why because pd5 produce pgc1 alpha which increases this decreases the antioxidant increases the antioxidant enzyme reduces the ros in the mitochondria and improves the contractile function and reduces the cell death particularly in diabetic hearts so pd5 inhibitors low dose can be given even if it doesn't have erectile dysfunction it will definitely have other benefits mpg sglt2 and pd and, and metformin we have already discussed about it we have a diet trial which is now shown remi in type 2 diabetes with just lifestyle measures and even mediterranean diet has been prescribed and has been shown to improve erectile dysfunction patients my friend dr parish tandona put patients on testosterone with who had hypogonadism and diabetes he found improvement in the insulin resistance and their sexual dysfunctions also improved dean ornish long time back produced with intensive lifestyle changes that coronary artery diseases can be cured and this is not a myth but a reality okay now we have most of the risk factors which we see are modifiable and cleveland clinic clearly showed that nutritional intervention will not only halt but also prevent or even reverse the coronary artery look at this huge plaque without stenting it has been cured so friends the doctor of the future will no longer treat human frame with drugs but rather cure and prevent disease with it i have so many patients who are diabetics but with pure lifestyle measures pure intensive life they have brought their hba1c to be less than 7 without even taking any drugs two time nobel prize winner dr lenis pauling declared nearly all diseases can be traced to a nutritional deficiency so what is my take home message is it is a shame for us for a man to grow old without seeing the beauty and strength of which his body is capable your body is capable of reversing every metabolic disease which you have try it out reduce salt reduce oil reduce sugars do workouts avoid smoking do uh, lifestyle measures you will definitely see a change in you have realistic expectations you will not get the same uh, same erections as you got when you were 20 or 30 but yes you will definitely have endothelial dysfunction can it be resolved can it be reversed yes it can be with statins ace inhibitors antioxidants l arginine estrogen therapy four weeks of l arginine improved endothelial dysfunctions to 40% 
So what else he wants? You have strategies in play. Dr. R. D. Lele in 2007 published an article in JAPI and said there are so many strategies to reverse endothelial dysfunction, PPAR alpha and gamma agonists, which increase nitric oxide, vitamin E, C, L arginine, tetrahydrobiotin, cypiatrin. So many things which we have in our armamentarium which we can give to prevent or to reverse the vascular endothelial dysfunction. Also, we have strategies to reverse diabetes. So why endo erectile dysfunction, which is the com common complications of diabetic cannot be cured or cannot be prevented. So the future is most of the exciting future is that young adults, if you diagnose early, early atherogenic processes can be halted and this stage is reversible. If these strategies are, if this mechanism is in place, diabetic importance can be prevented friends the secret of sexual fitness is love your body avoid salt oil and sugars give a u-turn to your metabolic imbalance have a regular rhythm of sex life increase your romance increase your touch which is very very important vitamin t or vitamin touch produces intimacy it produces a supreme pleasurable satiety Hugging, I find couples hardly hug each other. Hugging, embracing is nothing but touching hearts. Men ejaculate, turn themselves on the other side. There is no after play. You need to again do the foreplay, again touch her, compliment her, tell her she was beautiful after you have ejaculated. Don't turn yourself on the other side. Don't use them like a sleeping pill. This is what you uh, all mistake and that develops a disinterest in the partner and then you feel that she is not interested in her. Feminism needs to be adored, admired, trusted and respected. If a man who doesn't adore, admire, trust and respect feminism, I pray to God that he should get permanent incurable erectile dysfunctions. Yoga, beautiful, try it out. It is fantastic to be seen. So friends, lifestyle will not only reduce the pro-inflammatory milieu, reduces insulin in in resistance, reduces oxidative stress and reduces endothelial dysfunction, produces improved well-being and reduced burden of sexual dysfunctions. So in men with ED, whatever may be the cause, all can be halted and reversed. Hypogonadism can be managed. Early ejaculation also can be managed. So the truth today is that endothelial dysfunction and erectile dysfunction due to diabetes can be reversed and it's not a myth but a reality. All PD5 inhibitors, they don't increase the desire. There is 40% of non-responders. Then we have testosterone, but it has to be given in caution. We can't give it to younger patients with fear of heart failure or prostate. So the Raja of all we have is L-arginine fenugreek and we have lifestyle modification and regenerative medicine, which is the thing. Sex is not for recreation or procreation. It is just for relationship. Friends, wrinkles don't hurt. Love each other unconditionally. You are partners of love. Love really has no expiry date. So ED in diabetics is not an option for anyone. It is how gracefully we handle the process and how lucky we are as the process handles us. It's a really blessing to us. We know that when you reverse diabetes with lifestyle modifications and nutraceuticals, ED is a correctile dysfunction even in diabetes. This is my book, Sex Has No Expiry Date, available on Amazon. So my last slide, friends, in diabetes, impotency is very, very common is a tip of an iceberg, is the earliest marker of coronary artery disease. It is an endothelial dysfunction. Low dose PD5 inhibitors, short course of testosterone are ideal. l arginine supplement with fenugreek is a boon. A heart that loves is always young. Age, weight, height are just numbers. Lifestyle measures can reverse the metabolic syndrome, even coronary artery disease. This is what science has told us. So erectile dysfunction or diabetic importance is a correctile dysfunction or it can be prevented also and if so sex really has no expiry date thank you all for your love i'll be happy to answer any questions you all have